Hi everyone, uh, welcome to our webinar series on URICAD. We appreciate uh, your attendance here and this is actually our, the last one in our series and it's on version 19. Uh, before we get going, once again I will uh, introduce our team, Mike Noftal, Independent Consultant, Washington State. My name is Graham Hutchinson, Nelson Irrigation in Walla Walla, Washington. Steve McCoon with Nelson Irrigation, Walla Walla, Washington. Joe Vivier, the global support person for Eric Head in New Zealand. And Ignacio Del Campo uh, with Nelson Irrigation in Chile. Today is actually, the, uh, we say farewell to, to Mike Noftal. Um, Mike has uh, been with us uh, with IRICAD support for over 15 years. He's been a user of, a user of IRICAD for, uh, for about 25 years and he'll remain a very, very active user with IRICAD. So he'll still be in the scene, but um, Mike is uh, needing more time for his consulting business and is moving away from direct IRICAD uh, support. Mike, are you in the background there? Um, you told me you were practicing your uh, parade wave, or as we would say in New Zealand, the uh, Queen's wave. So you're welcome to um, to say hi if you would like. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me, Graham? Yes, I can. Yeah, yeah. yeah I just wanted to say that it's been great. Uh, like you said, 25 years using ERICAD. That number is not going to stop anytime soon. Continue to. Uh, be a part of uh, the IRICAD family in that way. And uh, just grateful for the opportunity to work with the team, uh, the IRICAD team at Nelson Irrigation and also uh, the, the team in New Zealand. And uh, I'm excited about these new features and development as much as anybody else. So um, I'm grateful for all the, the users, uh, the, the people that I've met throughout the time. And I imagine I'll continue to make and develop those relationships going forward. Thank you very much, Mike, and we really do appreciate all the help that you've given us. So um, as you say, you'll still be around and we'll be in constant contact. So we'll talk again soon. Uh, I'd like to introduce a couple of new members to our team. Uh, we have Dan Speer and Jabez Medeiros. Uh, Dan Speer is located in Kansas uh, in the United States. And Jabez is located in Chile in Latin America. Well, Dan and Jabez are independent consultants also, and they both have tremendous experience in irrigation design and in, in with IRICAD. So we welcome them to the team and they both will have the support of Joe and myself and Steve and, and the programmers in New Zealand. So as I mentioned, this is the last uh, webinar in the series and it will be on version 19. This is the first year that we've done these webinar series. We've normally had a school here in Walla Walla, but uh, the pandemic really changed that. And I think this sort of thing will, will continue going forward. So we hope it's been valuable. Please use the question and answer feature of Zoom and our team will try and answer your questions. Um, para los uh, asistentes de habla español, se puede hacer preguntas por el menú preguntas y repuestos. Trataremos de contestarles en español. So version 19, um, there's a very, very full list of um, new features and additions and fixes in version 19. We're going to focus on the major ones today. And Joe Vivier is going to join us from New Zealand and she's going to start things off with um, the run length calculator and some subdivision options. Um, are you are you there, Joe? Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Joe. And you should be able to share your screen now. Okay, can you see that, everyone? Yes, we can. Excellent. Right, so I'm going to take you through the run length calculator, which is a tool that was developed to help you uh, know how to subdivide a block. 
So this tool will tell you how long a tape will run for and can also help you with the selection of, of the drip line. Um, it comes in three modes. The first mode is the simple mode. So on any of the tape tools, you'll be able to see this little icon here, which is our uh, run length calculator. And for the selected drip line, you'll be able to specify an inlet pressure, um, the slope, um, the pressure range that you want it to work within, and you can calculate the length. So this will be your run length over a 2% downhill slope. Um, you can change that and, and find the maximum length for that. You can also check the length of a known length. So if you're running, uh, if you want to run this drip line and uh, you know that your length is well probably a bit more than that so I'm thinking meters <laughs> uh, 300 feet and uh, then you can check the length and it's going to tell you the pressure range that it's going to operate within and if it's a non-PC tape it will tell you the flow variation and the uh, emission uniformity as well well at least those numbers will change if it's non-pressure compensating the second way that you can use the run length calculator is via the standalone tool which is available in the tools menu. Now this option includes things like a filter. So instead of having the whole list of drip line available, you can actually filter it and say, well, include the ones that aren't turned on in the database or specify the spacing um, oh, I changed this to feet this morning. I actually can't work in feet <laughs> when I'm doing that, sorry. Let's just go back to metric. It's too early for me to convert <laughs> into, into inches. So if we're doing um, something between 0.5 and 0.7 me, um, meters of spacing, we might want to specify the SDR, it has to be between 300 and 500 litres per hour per 100 metres. Um, now, when we filter that, our list has been shortened to include only the drip line that has that spacing and that SDR. So that will just help with the, uh, with the selection process. If we select a tape that is not um, pressure compensating, Did have one in mind before, not sure where it's gone. Then we can specify um, the, the input to be based on a flow limit or an EU limit, or we can simply use the pressure limit and, and say we want the pressures between this and this. Um, and we can calculate the length that way. So inlet pressure is important, any slope if it's relevant, uh, and the, the limits that you want it to work to, and we can calculate the length uh, that way. The third method is the profile mode. So you can select a tape that's existing already, or you can just highlight a line and when you run the run length calculator, if there is elevation in the design, I've just got those elevations turned off at the moment, um, then you'll be able to see the profile of what that line or tape is, is running across. And we can use that information to um, accurately calculate the run length. So we've got uh, different options in the profile mode. So we can tell Ericad where the tape is starting from or where it's going to, if it's going to be center fed. And we can put that information on to the design after it's calculated the run lengths for us. So here it has uh, split it into uh, three. 
So depending on the slope has determined the length of the, the drip line. And if we place that on the design, we can see here that we've got um, some markers of where, where it could end or where the um, a center submain might go. And we can use that information to then subdivide the block uh, via the new manual cuts option. So let me just make a tape irrigation block. Oh, I'd selected this one, I think it was. Okay, I'll just turn off a couple of layers. Okay, so we have our irrigation block and we have a marker here. And uh, what I want to do is I want to use those markers as well as the shape of the block to subdivide my block. And there's several ways that we can do that. Um, so we can select the subdivide block option. I'm not going to slice it at the moment, um, but we can do. Um, and we can see that there's a new option here, which is called manual. It's currently grayed out because we haven't told it to use anything yet. So if I draw a polyline that I want um, along the lines of this sort of shape, and I'm just going to do a multiple copy And I'm going to put it roughly around where those markers are. I know I probably shouldn't go much longer than what they are, but I do have a little bit of leeway. Oh, where's the next one here? So I'm not going to put that one down there. I'm just going to come back a bit and make it a little bit more... Uh, better for that third block. So now I'll delete that one. I can't use that. I'm going to select the boundary and I'm going to select these two cut lines, which means that the tool will automatically select the manual cuts option. So if I then also want to have some slices and let's say we'll have two slices there then it's going to do the normal with the slicing, but use those lines that I've, I've specified. And I'm just going to cancel that and make my gap a bit smaller. Okay, so we've based it on the run length calculator and the shape of the block to get our subdivisions. Okay, so now we're ready to, uh, you know, where I would have put in submains and control valves, of course, if I was doing this for real, uh, but now we're ready to, to carry on with the design process. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to show you was the new bent drip lines or polyline drip lines tool. So I'll just select this and delete it. and draw the boundary back on. Okay, so we have some options here now. We can actually even use a, uh, a contour line or a line that we draw ourselves to specify the multi-vertex lateral direction for the drip lines. So if we now go to the tape irrigation block again, uh, we can use the user defined and we can say draw polyline, for example. And if I draw a polyline inside the block, 
with the direction that I want it to be in. Then it will draw the bent tapes for us. Uh, there is also the option to specify an existing line, which is where you can use a contour line if you want to, or if you have a pre-drawn line, you can use that instead. So we'll select this user defined select line polyline. So we just click on that one and that's what it has used. Uh, now the other option that has been enabled as well is the bent, uh, sorry, the split polylines. So I'm just going to redraw this where I've got different Words between the um, the boundaries, just so that we get uh, something a little different. And I can show off this tool. So if we use this one, oh, that didn't quite do what I wanted it to do. Uh, we have the option to have a split polylines. Let me try that again. Okay, so when the split polyline option is not enabled, as soon as it, it can't draw a full tape, it's going to stop drawing them. Uh, but if you want the whole area to be populated with tapes, uh, regardless of whether they're split or not, you can turn on this option and it's going to split them um, through here. So you have those two options now as well. Uh, are there any questions before we go on to the next topics? Joe, there is a question that's been posted. Um, is this these options available on spray irrigation blocks or only tape irrigation blocks? The subdivide, uh, sorry, this the manual cuts and the um, Sorry, the manual cuts will be available on the spray irrigation blocks because that's about subdividing irrigation entities. Uh, the run length calculator, of course, is just for tapes and the, um, the user-defined polyline option for bent tapes is only available for, for drip line. Yeah, so there's no, no split polyline options for the spray irrigation blocks. Okay, thank you. Thanks again, Joe. Joe showed us the manual cut subdivision tool in conjunction with the run length calculator. Here we'll show you the manual uh, cut tool using physical barriers in a farm project. Here's a, a field of drip irrigation with a farm road running through it and a drainage ditch uh, in this bottom area. So first I'm going to subdivide either side of that road, select the boundary overall, select the drainage ditch, sorry, the, uh, the road in the center line of the road, activate the subdivision tool. We can see that the manual cuts is active. It can see a, a line going across the rows and intersecting each side of the boundary. And it creates two blocks. 
I'll just cancel that for a second and make sure I have a 20 foot uh, gap in between there. Go back, OK, and accept those changes. And now we have two blocks with a 20 foot gap in between those areas. Now for the bottom area, I'm going to select the boundary of the bottom area, select this uh, drainage ditch line, go to the subdivision tool. I'm going to change the gap to 10 feet across the drainage ditch. We can see it's manually activated because URICAD can see uh, a line going across the rows and through both boundaries. This line can be somewhat parallel to the to the rows, but mostly it has to have a has to have an orientation across the rows, and we get a subdivision between those two blocks. We can select the top area and go to the subdivision tool. We'll have uh, say two slices there and no cuts, and we get that solution. So we've taken an area, divided it into four, uh, either side of a farm road and then either side of the drainage ditch. And the important things are that the intersecting lines need to go across the rows. They may have some parallel orientation, but for the most part, they do need to go across the rows. And they also have to intersect two boundaries. The road we easily see that intersects two boundaries the drainage ditch intersects this bottom boundary, and it barely intersects this top boundary, but so it worked. Here we have an identical block, and it's subdivided either side of the road. I'm going to try and subdivide the drainage ditch, but in this case, we can see that the drainage ditch does not go pass through the boundary. And so we'll see what happens here. I'll select the, the block boundary select the drainage ditch, activate the uh, subdivision tool, and manual cuts is grayed out. And it's grayed out because it does not see a line that intersects uh, two boundaries. So it's very important that your um, manual cut line intersects two boundaries and goes as an orienti orientation for the most part across the rows. Lastly, uh, we'll try this again. Uh, we can see that we are through the, the boundary here. And we'll try and do it in one step and see what happens. So we select the whole boundary, select the uh, center line of the road, and select the drainage ditch, and then activate the subdivision tool. We'll have no slices, manual cuts, and we can see that it's only cutting in two places. It hasn't used this drainage ditch. And the reason for that is that the drainage ditch was on an orientation that was going to intersect the road. If the drainage ditch had been uh, more uh, of an orientation across the block, we'll just activate those uh, rows again. If the drainage ditch, ditch had been more like this, URICAD would have uh, subdivided into three areas, two areas either side of the road and then two er another area on this side of the, the drainage ditch. But since this original ditch was going to intersect with the road, it didn't do that. So important that Number one, the, uh, the line goes across the rows and intersects two boundaries. And if you have more than one manual cut line, that they're not on, on, on an orientation that would uh, make them intersect. Now we'll have a look at a further subdivision tool. And this is in a sprinkler block. Here is a solid set of sprinkler block of, of uh, R10s. And we will subdivide this in a uh, traditional way prior to version 19. And we'll go with two slices and two cuts. And in this particular example, we can see that it's going to cut out uh, a, a segment of sprinklers. 
Uh, that's the halfway point of the block, and that's where Eric had, has decided to make that cut. And if we accept that, it creates four blocks, but in the process, it has deleted a number of outlets, which is not what we want. So let's try that again with a new tool that exists in version 19. Again, I will select the, uh, whoops, I want, I want to select the, the block for subdivision. And now I'm going to activate a new feature called cut between outlets. And what that's going to do is subdivide the block, but it's going to cut between a couple of outlets and we've got a gap here specified as 10 feet. So if we do that, we can see that it has left the outlets intact and it's chosen to take out a 10 foot section through there and we can accept that. And that's been a successful operation. It's, it's left our sprinklers intact and then created uh, four blocks. They're not quite even possibly, this bottom section may be one sprinkler longer than the top. And we can see here that we have segments of lateral pipe past the last outlet. And that's indeed the case on the subdivision here too. There's pipe past each each last outlet. So the third way we will do it is we'll, we will utilize another new feature in version 19. And this, this time I'll edit the block and under options, I will activate trim ends. I'm doing this after I've uh, created the block. This could be part of the creation pro process be, before you even draw the block. And if you activate this before the block you will end up with trimmed ends but i'm editing it after the fact to to show it to you and now this block has no uh, lateral lengths past the last outlet in comparison to its neighbor that does have laterals past the last outlet so we will uh, subdivide this block in the same way that we just did before select the block go to subdivision two slices, two cuts, and we are leaving the cut between outlets activated. And we can see that it has subdivided the block. It's left the outlets intact, and it's used that trim feature on every subdivided block and taken away uh, the, the lengths of lateral pipe after the last sprinkler. So that's an example of a couple more uh, tools in version uh, 19. Now I'm going to pass over to Steve McCoon and he's going to show you a few more. And uh, so you can, I trust you can see my uh, AirCAD with a field on it here. And what I wanted to show first of all was the elevation mapping tool that's new to version 19. I've got a field here with some elevation. These are five foot elevations on it. We've got several uh, sprinkler blocks laid out and a tape irrigation block laid out in this field. And when you wanna show um, the uh, spray elevations, there's a, a couple things. I'm gonna first start by turning off the Google Earth image, just to make it a little bit easier to see what I've got going on here. And I'm gonna, go in and we're gonna select a valve. And this is a orchard valve, um, or you know, for full coverage, these are R10 rotators sitting out in the field. And then go to um, reports and show elevation map. And I'll show the map on the, um, and I'll create the legend for this block that I, I made. So you can see the elevations are changing. We've got different colors. Here's the legend. And these are the associated elevations for those spots in the field. And this is what it looks like when you've got uh, regular outlets in the field. In this uh, zone down here, we're going to choose one and do it again. And this is what it will look like with tapes. It looks a little bit different. Um, we'll, we've, we've selected the First, we've selected the uh, control 
that we want, the con uh, zone control valve. And then we'll let it, um, we'll create a legend here as well. And you can see with drip tapes, it looks different than it does with individual outlets. So those are the two examples of what that can look like. And then if you have an elevation, uh, you can see if I zoom in this, if you've got a Google Earth image, you wanna select that image and we will right click to modify in our Z order and move it to the back. If we move it to the back, then you can see we can get the, uh, whether they're uh, sprinklers or drip lines, we can get that elevation imagery um, right on the top of the um, Google Earth image. And of course, you saw how I created the legend, so we can have legends there or not. When you're done with these, if you'd like them to not be there, just go back to reports, to zone elevation map and to clear symbols. Uh, and they'll go away. I just had one selected. So the other um, thing that I wanted to show you, uh, the next thing is a valve summary dialog. So if you go to design and we go down to a valve specification summary, for each of the four valves that I have in this design, there are three, it's the same valve, uh, three different you know, fields, they're fairly small, small flow rates and a very low, the elevation of that field, if we hadn't noticed, goes down from the top of the screen to the bottom at lower elevations. So we can select these, um, uh, we'll just select all of this and we can go to copy. Then if I open up Excel, um, I trust you can see my Excel screen now and we, you know, move some of these. Then we can right click and paste that uh, information into this uh, Excel spreadsheet. So if you need to manipulate it, uh, that type of thing, uh, you're able to uh, or keep track of it in, in an Excel spreadsheet, which uh, some of you uh, must need to do at some point. That's how you do that. Uh, the last thing I wanted to show you in, in my AirCAD here is where you go to make sure that you're um, updated. So under help, if I go to about Iracad, you can see that I am in version 1907, okay? So there's ways to make sure in version 19 that you stay updated. You can go to help and then you can configure your updates in a certain number of ways. Um, you can have don't check automatically. You can have check and prompt me and download, install the updates or check automatically and you can set frequency for that type of thing where you can pass to where the downloads go. So you can set automatic functions up for these updates. Um, or you can just do it manually and go in, check for updates. So it's gonna go online and it looks like there's an update available. Uh, I was at 1907, as you saw, and now I can go and grab 1908. So that'll be a way that you can quickly um, and consistently stay updated with your version 19 of your cat. Hutch, that's uh, what you had tasked me with showing off. Um, I'll uh, pass it back to you and then I'm gonna go update my Erica. Thank you very much, Steve. That was, that was really well done. Um, one other, uh, I, one other, um, um, option to use the copy and paste from that valve dialog box is that if you're doing a valve and head design and you're putting in or, or demand point design and you might have uh, 15 or 20 demand points that you're laying out there in the past every time you create a demand point you have to enter the uh, pressure and flow required um, but with that dialog box what you can do that is have that available in excel copy that and paste it into the dialog box. So you could put all the demand points in and they may have the same pressure and flow that you, by default, but you can go to your spreadsheet, um, generate that uh, valve dialog box and copy from your spreadsheet in there and then run the design and analysis. So, so that's uh, our wrap up for today. Um, it's been a great webinar series. We, we really do, uh, 
appreciate your um, uh, attendance and we look forward to hearing from you in the future.